Cesc Fabregas, can we come in? Yes, you can come in, of course, always. Thank you very much. Just a little bit of context. You were born the 4th of May 1987. You play for the uh, uh, Leg One Club Monaco. You left Barcelona as a 16-year-old to join Arsenal, won the league with them in 2004, the FA Cup in 2005, breaking records uh, along the way to become the uh, best player in your position in the Premier League and in Europe. Left for Barcelona in 2011, where you played with Xavi, Iniesta, Messi, more titles there. Went back to London in 2014, where you won the league with Chelsea, becoming as well the best Spanish player ever to be in the Premier League. And you won two European Championships and one World Cup. So I would say that you probably got all your dreams coming true by now. Well, nearly. I mean, you know, I couldn't have predicted I would have this type of career uh, when I first uh, started because um, everything was very quickly for me. It happened so fast, so I never really had time to think or analyze everything that happened uh, or the impact that uh, my decision of going to Arsenal had in, in my life. And uh, obviously, you know, I'm very proud of what I did. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've done some bad decisions like everyone in life, but um, I cannot say I regret uh, many things in my career because I always try to do everything from my heart. Uh, yes, sometimes I have been a bit impulsive, uh, but I think uh, this quality or, uh, have also given me a lot of strength and uh, character to, to keep going every day, to wake up motivated to, to try and be the best. Where do we find you? How, how is the confinement going for you? Yeah, the confinement is, is going well. I mean, you know, we are a family that we like uh, to stay at home all the time. To be honest, we don't live uh, much uh, home. So even if you don't believe it, my kids in four weeks have never even asked me to to go out of the house which is incredible they are so happy at home with us you know we try to give them as much love as possible are you ready for some questions that you perhaps never been asked no yeah i'm always ready always ready okay so do you believe in god yes of course 100 percent. who is he for you who is god for you god is someone who who is always there for you he's a light at the end of the tunnel is someone who who's always trying to to give uh, good signs who protect us and who is always uh, giving the right spirit and, and motivation to do to do the right thing mm -hmm. what did you want to be as a kid ah, as a kid i wanted to be a, a football player 100 percent there was there was never a plan B. You 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 weren't thinking of doing a you know being a painter or an architect or anything else. No no there there was never a plan B because I started very young and you know when when we are kids you don't think about what uh, you want to do except when you are eighteen and you have to go to university and you have to make a decision. But I never had to go through this. My career started at sixteen straight away at the first team. So. Never had time to, to think about it, but if I have to say something, probably if I didn't go to London so early in my life, I think I would have started uh, working for my dad um, in the summers, especially. He's a constructor in my, in my hometown, so probably at 16, 17, I would have started working in the summer with him and, and see where, where it took me. So we all have recurrent dreams. Sometimes they are nightmares, sometimes they are nice dreams, but they are recurrent. Will you share a recurrent dream for you? I don't know. Um, it's difficult. Uh, I always kind of uh, had this thing in my mind, kind of dream that haunted me sometimes uh, that when my parents got divorced. So it's something that I always dreamt of them being together forever. And uh, it's something mm -hmm. that uh, has always been in my mind. You know, I, I'm a very family man and it's not easy, you know, when your parents get divorced and you need to be at, basically to make everyone happy. You need to be uh, two places at the same time. Basically, one cannot be happy if you do something uh, you have to do share. And since very young age, I had to be very kind of careful, responsible in this case seeing them with other people uh, and it's something that 
I never really got used to it, even today. And um, yeah, it's something that has always been there following me since it happened. A book, your favorite book? A book, um, I like reading books of Cesco. Sí, Cesco Spa. He gives a, a lot of uh, motivational speeches. He talks in his books about how to motivate yourself, how to um, live the day to day as a sportman and, and you know, how to how to educate yourself uh, as well in certain moments of your career when things don't go as well. Also, when things go well, because sometimes that's dangerous when things go too well for you, you know, you, you need to know how to react to any kind of situation. It's it's kind of interesting. And it's, this is the part of the game where I'm more uh, interested. A video game. Uh, I didn't play video games since I had my first child, so probably always a football game, uh, FIFA or PES. That's the two. I'm I'm very bad at the other. I tried to play these hunting games, Call of Duty. Uh, I don't know the other ones, but uh, I'm really I'm terrible at them. Basketball, tennis, only football I was good at. What is the naughtiest thing you have ever done? Oi, don't go there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I don't know. I don't even know if I should say that. But uh, before going to London, uh, I was in La Masia and uh, we all go uh, to the same school and I got spelled in the last week of the exams, the last week ever of schools, they were the, the exams, the final exams, and it was a really big uh, week. And I did something very bad at school. <laughs> and uh, the girl that I did it uh, to uh, told the teacher and they spelled me. So people at La Masia were very upset with me. My parents, I will always remember my parents' face when they met me at La Masia with the director, Ruben. Uh, it was very, very scary. And um, I did the exams. I was only going to school to do the exams and I passed, uh, which is good. And my mom always tells me that one of the reasons why she was in favor of going, of me going to London and accepting this challenge or new way of life away from home was because she thought that I was losing uh, a little bit my focus being in La Masia. Uh, with living with all my friends uh, every single day, every Saturday, uh, you know, doing things a bit naughty or being, uh, you know, at the places that I shouldn't be at that age. And she always thought that it was a very good decision for me to, to go away and start a new life. In fact, what a challenge. At 16, you, you leave Barcelona and, and you go to London to live with a family. Uh, looking back... I guess it must have sounded like an adventure at the time, but looking back, do you think it was tough for you? Not really. Um, I always, everyone tells me, oh, it must have been so tough and difficult to be there by yourself. But my passion and my dedication, my, my, my determination to, to succeed and to be good and to show that I was good enough to start playing for Arsenal was so big that I never really thought about it. I was going home in this room so small with this small bed I will always remember uh, no TV only a, a little computer and and just resting going to training resting going to game going home and then I was with Philip Senderos sometimes we were playing video games uh, so yeah my, my, my main focus was just to be good at football that's the that's that's my main uh, objective and, and that's it that's why I, I never really felt it was difficult I was just trying to enjoy the moment and be the best what not many people know is that uh, at 16 you could have been at Arsenal with Gerard Piquet and Messi as well how, how close was that I knew they wanted them they, they wanted us all of uh, us three I mean obviously it's very difficult uh, to get probably three of the most, uh, how can I put it, um, with most future at the club to take them from one same team to, to, to in this case, Arsenal or Man United. I mean, 
I remember I had also Man United. Uh, they were following me. They wanted me to go there. But once I wo- once I went to to London Colney and I met Steve Rowley, Francis Kagigao, Arsene Wenger, and David Dean, for me it was all over. Uh, I knew I wanted to be there and uh, nothing else. For Gerard Piquet, it was the opposite uh, as well. Man United and Arsenal wanted him. He went to Man United and he preferred that. Uh, and Leo, obviously, um, you know, with uh, all the treatment that he was having and with uh, his father and himself having moved to Barcelona only three years before, I think they were having a big project in front of him. Maybe not the same for me and, and Gerard. It was a bit different. They was coming from, from outside and everyone, uh, you know, was was thinking that he could be the next big thing. And uh, yeah, everyone has their own life and their own decisions and it went well for, for three of us, to be honest. Who would you take for dinner? Oof. I would have to think this carefully. I think maybe one of these legends of uh, another sport, like uh, maybe uh, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, uh, <laughs> obviously Kobe Bryant, uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, I would have loved uh, maybe to to go on a kind of date <laughs> or have dinner uh, with them to see how it is, you know, being a sportsman in another type of completely different sport and how they they live their life, their their, their passion for for the game. And yeah, I think I think that that could be a good one. Now, what is the most surprising call that you got this week? This week. Uh, from my great grandmother, from the from the residence where she is, uh, she's ninety five, uh, and yeah, she called me two days ago, and it was the most uh, satisfying call I I've had all week and the whole month and the whole of last six months probably. <laughs> is she okay? Is she in a, is she in a good mood? Yeah, she's in a good mood. Uh, poor her. She, she's got the the coronavirus, so yeah, we're a bit worried in the family because she's alone in the residence and we cannot see her. You know, we cannot talk to her whenever we want, and uh, even a hug or tell her that we love her so much. So yeah, it's not uh, it's not an easy situation for all of us, but uh, but yeah, we we can talk to her once every two three days, which is satisfying for us. Yeah. Oh, we wish her. We wish her well, Sesk. Thank you. What do you wish you had done? What in my life? I wish I had gone to to university. Yeah. Um, as much as people think that we can do both things, and it's very, very difficult. I don't know. I don't. I I talk for myself here, and. Uh, I tried when I was at Arsenal, I tried to study in English and uh, I've done a few things, but when you are a competitor and you are a professional athlete and I don't know, as I said, I'm talking for myself, I leave training and if I didn't have a bad training, I'll be upset. If I had a good training, I will always be thinking about tomorrow and uh, the next game and you play every three days and now you're traveling. My life the last 17 years has been football, 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 football. I mean, you you get frustrated, you get upset, you're happy, you're thinking for the next move, next game. What did you do well? What did you do wrong? Uh, Critics from the coach, from, uh, I don't know, someone like Francis Kagigao, always in my head, uh, you know, telling me I didn't play well, you didn't put your, your foot there, you know, you have to do better in this, in that. So... It's an obsession. It just becomes an obsession. Uh, even now, you know, I'll be 33 now in, in, in two weeks and it, it never changes. This, this is a way of life. And, you know, yes, my kids have helped me a lot to have a bit of a, more of a peace of mind. I always put, but like if we lose a game, I always put it on myself. I always thought I lost alone. It was my fault. And I was very, very, very hard on myself through all my throughout all my career. And uh, I think people tell me that I kind of killed myself and that I this is not good for my health and stuff. But I think this kind of helped me to arrive where I arrived and to push myself every single day to be to be better. And uh, this never leaves you. Yeah, as I said, my kids help me sometimes, but even, you know, I have a bad training or a bad game or something like that, or I didn't play 
oh, I think I could have done better. Unfortunately, you pay it with the ones you love. I paid it with my grandpa, with my with my parents since I'm four years old. Uh, I paid it with my wife. I paid sometimes with my children. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they, they know me. They grew up with this, and uh, that's the way I am. And that's why I always said that I regret, I regret going to uni, uni university and do a degree there. But it was it was impossible for the way of of life that we was living. Fancy coming in?